Dave and welcome back to the Canyon Chasers Garage. Just like every other fluid on your motorcycle, your coolant needs to be changed periodically. You need to refer to your owner's manual to find out what the frequency should be for your motorcycle. But every two years is a good rule of thumb. If you're a race bike or your bike sees a lot of track time, then we recommend you change your coolant at least once per season. This video is a great companion to our how to do a motorcycle track day video because many track day providers and track organizations require that all glycol be removed from your motorcycle's cooling system. And for many riders, the idea of flushing the cooling system sounds pretty daunting. But in actuality, flushing the cooling system is really no more involved than changing your engine oil. But first, what is glycol? Well, glycol provides protection from freezing as well as lubrication to the internal components of your cooling system. Most traditional antifreezes use ethylene glycol, which provides excellent protection from freezing, but doesn't really transfer heat all that well and is highly toxic. Just two ounces of ethylene glycol is enough to cause total kidney failure and kill an average dog in a very gruesome and painful way. So please be very careful when handling ethylene glycol around pets. Not only is it extremely toxic, but it has a very sweet smell and taste to it, so animals are drawn to it. The other problem with any kind of glycol, and the reason why many track day providers and race organizations and tracks don't allow glycol, is that when it's spilled, it's every bit as slippery as oil and every bit as difficult to clean up. Now I mentioned that ethylene glycol isn't all that good at cooling. It's actually the water in your coolant that's doing all of the cooling. But water provides virtually no lubrication and virtually zero protection from corrosion, which is why there are several non-glycol based products on the market, such as water wetter, liquid performance, and Kool-Aid, the coolant, not the powdered beverage. These provide some protection against corrosion and some lubrication. But again, like water, these products provide no protection from freezing. So if it gets cold where you live, make sure you get this stuff out of your radiator before it freezes. If your track day does not have a no glycol rule, or you just need to replace your coolant, then we highly recommend using a product that employs propylene glycol instead of ethylene glycol, such as engine ice. Propylene glycol still provides protection from freezing, but is much better at transferring heat. It's better at preventing corrosion, breaks down much slower, and is mostly non-toxic as long as you don't ingest a whole lot of it. In fact, propylene glycol is used in small amounts as a preservative in many brands of dog food. However, we still urge caution when around pets. Whatever product you end up choosing, we strongly encourage you to use a motorcycle-specific coolant. The other important thing to remember is to only use pure distilled water, never tap water. The biggest reason to do this is tap water is likely to have all sorts of contaminants that will result in scale and deposits that will end up clogging and eventually ruining your cooling system. So before we get started, we're going to need to drain out the old coolant, flush and clean the system, and then refill the system with our coolant of choice. So let's begin. Draining the system is pretty easy, but make sure your dog isn't hanging out with you just in case you spill. Remove any and all bodywork that is blocking access to your radiator cap, water pump, and don't forget to gain access to your overflow bottle. Make sure your engine is cold to the touch, then remove the cap on the overflow bottle. Next, loosen, but don't remove the radiator cap. Then get your funnel and catch basin ready and remove the coolant drain bolt, which can almost always be found on the water pump. If you completely removed your radiator cap, water will shoot out of the drain bolt and across the room. By leaving the radiator cap on, but loose, the speed at which water drains will be more controlled. Depending on your bike, you may need to remove the line that runs from the top of the radiator to the expansion tank in order to fully drain it. Now, to clean your system, we're going to use the exact same process you use to clean your coffee maker. Mix some distilled water with vinegar at a 50-50 ratio. The vinegar is just acidic enough to clean contaminants and residue without harming seals and gaskets. Refit the drain bolt, fill the radiator and the overflow, then wait several minutes for the water and the vinegar to fill all the internal passages inside the system before you refit the cap on the overflow bottle as well as refit the cap on the radiator. Next, start the bike and let it run for about 10 minutes or until the engine reaches normal operating temperature. Walk away and wait for the engine to completely cool. Maybe go take the dog for a walk since he probably didn't like being banished from the garage. When the bike is cool to the touch, we want to go through the exact same process to remove the cleaning mixture from the motorcycle. Again, we need to stress, do not open your radiator cap until your engine is completely cool. But once everything is cool, you'll need to flush out any remaining vinegar and water by pouring pure distilled water through your radiator until the water coming out of the drain bolt is clean. Finally, it's time to refill the bike with our coolant of choice. It's the exact same process we use to fill the bike with water and vinegar. Refit the coolant drain bolt and be sure to use a new crush washer. These things are only about 25 cents and well worth it for the extra peace of mind. 
Fill the radiator and expansion tank, allowing several minutes for the coolant to fill all the internal passages. Top off your expansion tank and replace both caps. I like to squeeze the hoses to ensure I'm pushing fluid into any cavities and pushing air bubbles to the surface. Let the bike sit for a few minutes, then recheck the fluid levels and top off again if necessary. Start the engine and let it run for about 10 minutes until the coolant temperature reaches normal operating temperature, then let the bike cool completely. As the bike cools, air will be expelled from the system, so you may need to top off your radiator and expansion tank one last time. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out CanyonChasers.net for more how-to videos, product reviews, travel vlogs, and much, much more.